if I was to describe my work, I would say I make slipwear that's quite rooted in the English tradition. So I use a lot of the similar materials and some similar techniques that have been around for a long time. I think of it as having a kind of historical root, particularly in terms of materials, it's very simple. So I just have red clay, white slip, black slip and a green. So, and that's very much what people maybe would have used a couple of hundred years ago, if not more. I, I guess it, I'm also working from where my dad worked. So I guess he was a big part in the revival of slipwear in the, in the UK. So I'm just kind of taking what he's done and carrying on. Not, not necessarily in terms of shapes, maybe more in terms of the, the way he uses slip, you know, and his approach. I think that I'm just, I feel like I'm just taking what, you know, taking what other people have done and just added a bit of my own. I think my main influence would, would be music. So I suppose when I'm working, I'm after sort of a feel of it. How does it feel? Does it sort of resonate with me in a, but not more in a kind of gut way? And I think that's the same reaction I used to get from, especially when I was younger, from music. I get that energy and that, uh, you know, whatever you want to go and run out into the road and shout, <laughs> shout and, you know, I, and I always, that was always a real, I always wanted to connect with that excitement, I suppose. And I still do, but it's a little bit more subdued. I think I was trying to translate that, that energy into my work somehow. I get uh, standard red terracotta clay from uh, Valentine's and I start by wedging, which is mainly important as a sort of transition from what I've been doing to, the, to start thinking about what I'm going to do. Once I've wedged, I sort of shape the block of clay into a vague approximation of the shape I want. I then use a stick to make it sort of hollow, but not hollow, not very hollow. So it's still a very solid lump. The third stage is to cut the four sides using a, a wire. I like to just do that quite quickly. So I like to do just basically four cuts for the four sides and not to, to dwell on it too much, just make my marks um, I mean, I kind of consider them, but I, I don't like to, 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 to waste too much time. Um, so once I've sliced the four sides, and I'm, I always like the, the, the slice, it's very sort of fresh and, I don't know, juicy. When you've just, when you've just cut through the clay with a wire, it's got a real something about it I really like. Um, and the next stage is to make the top, which I, you do using a loop tool but I like to do that all in one motion so it's like a peel like almost like you peel a potato and and when I'm doing it I'm looking down from the top so I just I'm just looking at the thickness of the top opening so I don't really exactly know what the shape I'm going to make is but that's I don't mind that I'm always sort of interested to see what kind of shape I make really and it's it's like a little bit of a surprise I mean you can obviously change the angle of things but I like the element of slight chance I think so I do that and then that's basically it done so in five moves you've created a something that, I, that is pretty pretty exciting but then the next stage, you, you're left with a solid pot or a solid shape. Uh, so I have to dig out the, the clay from the inside, which is quite laborious. So I tend to take a, as much as I can out when it's very wet without, without messing up my nice uh, sliced edges. And then I usually have to go back the next day, take out the rest, and then I attach a base, so I score, scratch and score the base and the bottom of my pot, stick them together and just smooth around the, 
the join. So just sort of blend the join in so it looks like it's part of the general, part of the thing. I have a white slip. It's a, a ball clay from North Devon that I generally use. And then that, that consistency is, is sort of like creamy milk or something. And I tend to pour that all over the red clay of my big plate as a kind of base layer, really. Um, and I don't mind too much if there's a few bits not covered or that's all fine. So I pour that on and then I, let it, I put it down and let it almost rest for a little while. And I like to work when, when the layers of slip are wet. The longer I leave it, the more the white slip will soak into the clay body. So my marks are always different. So if I go and have a cup of tea and come back, my mark that I'm going to make will be a, have, have a different property to, you know, if I did it straight away, it'd be very splashy. So there's kind of a lot of variables. If I've got the, the white slip, then I'll use a, probably a black slip, which is something I make from uh, red clay iron and manganese and I also have a green slip which is just a bit of copper added to the white. The thing about a slip tray is you can get real energy. It's not, it's not the same as a pouring mark or a brushed mark. It's a quite a, well you can use them in different ways but the way I use them is uh, almost violently. I like to get a real sort of velocity really. So that works well when your layers of slip are wet. So you can get a real blending of, of different slips. So the, the wet black hitting the wet white at, at quite high speed creates some unexpectedness. Oh, it, it creates patterns that you can't predict. So generally I have a, a range of marks that I do, but they're all very simple. And, I, and so it would be like a few loops, a few lines. But the, the, the joy of it is they're always different. So it, every loop I've ever made has always been it's completely different from the loop before. But it's important to say that one of the reasons for that is that I don't work with the slip trailer on the surface. It's like a centimetre or so above the surface. So there's this little gap where it's all about the sort of velocity and it's about the angle. And, but it's also there's some variables there. So it's, it creates unpredictability. So even though you're doing the same line, it's, it just never comes out the same. So to me, that just seems to be endlessly fascinating. Like I, some marks I've made, I must have made them a thousand times and I'm still like, oh, look at that. It's always still exciting to me. <laughs>